production. Hello, everyone, and welcome to an on-the-road edition of the New Stack Makers. I'm your host, Heather Joslin, Editor-in-Chief of the New Stack. And today we're here in uh, Pittsburgh at PyCon US. Uh, Pittsburgh has historically been known as Steel City. It's a place where things get built. And today we're going to talk about building things in Python with Amazon Q Developer. And we're here uh, to learn from uh, Nathan Peck, who's with uh, Amazon Web Services. Hello, Nathan. Hello. Can you tell us what you what you do with Amazon? Uh, so I am a developer advocate on the Amazon Q Developer team, um, and so I work with uh, basically talking to folks about how to use generative AI to write code better, uh, mm -hmm. write code faster, and help you to understand code that is maybe a little bit tricky to understand as well. So, which is actually one of my favorite aspects of the of the product as well. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely un untangling. Other people's code is a big is a big part of 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 uh, being a programmer and uh, and uh, I have a question about about your uh, your relationship with Python. Like, how long have you been developing in Python? I'm not gonna lie. I'm not the most expert person when it comes to Python. Um, I have some like 15 years of experience with JavaScript and mm -hmm. and I've done a lot of containers. But primarily, my relationship with Python has been as someone who's helping operate a system that has Python involved with it. In particular, maybe a, a data scientist or someone who's creating an ETL job, they have written the Python script and they come to me and say, I need to run this Python script as a cron job that runs every every night or runs like once an hour or something like that. And so in that situation, the most common thing is that I'm taking somebody else's code, I'm trying to figure out how to run it and get it to run operationally. and inevitably there's going to be a failure somewhere. There's going to be an error message. You know, there's going to be something about that code that when I go and, and read it, I don't really understand what's going on there, mm -hmm. but I know that it's not working right, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, and I think this is common across many different programming languages across the industry. You know, all of us try to be T-shaped developers, you know, have that horizontal width, yeah. you know, all yeah. the different things we've touched uh, over the course of our career. And then there's a couple diff deep areas where we've like focused in on. But it's really hard to have depth across every programming language and every yeah. framework that's out there. And I think this is where generative AI is going to improve uh, things tremendously by allowing you to have access to a model that's essentially been trained on the entire depth of, of pretty much everywhere across uh, the software uh, industry. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. You can't. I mean, there are so many languages, and it's hard to it's hard to be an expert in everything. Yep. Um, uh, so let's let's dive in. Let's get started. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, we're going to look at Amazon Q Developer, as we mentioned. Um, I know uh, it was introduced. Amazon Q was introduced in November. We covered it in the news stack, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll definitely link to that story in in the the article that goes with this this video. Um, so you can you can dive into that. But mm -hmm. um, for those who maybe haven't read that article um, or don't know, what what is Amazon Q and what is Amazon Q Developer? Okay, so Amazon Q is sort of the uh, umbrella name for all of the generative AI and, and AI model-backed feature functionality that we we're building across the entire AWS uh, um, suite of services and, and experiences. So you'll see Q probably first pop up in the console. You know, if you're in the console, you'll notice there's a little Q button over on the side, which you can open up and you can start to ask questions about your AWS account. You can now ask it, like, what resources am I running? What's my bill? You know, things like that, basic questions. But you can also ask it deeper stuff like architectural questions. Mm -hmm. When might I use Lambda versus Fargate? Mm -hmm. um, when might it make sense to use an app runner? Or, like, how do I save money on my EC2 bill? Something like that. So you can start to ask, like, deeper questions about architecture as well. And it's trained on all these AWS documentation. Like, I, I've worked at AWS for a long time now, and so I've read a lot of the documentation, but I still haven't read all of it, right? There's so many pages of documentation, it's hard to sort of ingest all of that info mm -hmm. without something to help you sort of handhold you through that. So, so starting out with just being able to ask questions about AWS best practices, the next step is I want to take things down to my personal application that I'm building. Let's say I'm building that Python application and I want to know how to deploy a Python application in Lambda, you know, best practices for that. Mm -hmm. Well, we realized that it doesn't make sense to have that in the web console because as a developer, I want to spend most of my time in the IDE. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see the Amazon Q 
uh, now has an extension you can install inside of your IDE, whichever IDE you prefer. Mm -hmm. Personally, I use VS Code uh, on a daily basis. And once it's in there, I can now interact with my uh, code base by passing off portions of it to Amazon Q to ask it to explain, refactor, fix. I can also even ask Amazon Q to start developing a new feature on my code base wow. and see what kind of responses I get back from that. And and I'll be honest, it's not always 100% functional, but <laughs> it's going to get me, let's say, like 70% of the way there. It's going to get me to a starting point where if I'm blocked on trying to figure out how to develop a feature, it can jumpstart and inspire something that I can then take the rest of the way to, to the finish line. Yeah, it does seem like that's a, that's a way that um, people in a lot of industries are using generative AIs. Like, it's not to necessarily do the work, all the work, but yeah. to get them to jumpstart it, to get it started, you know, get mm -hmm. over it. Um, so, uh, can you can you set up the the demo for us that you're going to show us? Yeah. So I have uh, an application open in v VS Code now, and this application it is a little Streamlit application that. Uh, is itself a generative AI application. We got a little meta there. <laughs> but the idea is you can uh, ask it to write a story and it will then uh, write that write that story according to uh, what you asked for. So here I'm going to ask it to write a story about Python dev saving the day. And it's going to crunch uh, the numbers and, and, and come back for that in a, in a minute or two. Um, but let's focus on the code because that's the more interesting part. Okay. Now, I didn't write this application. As I said, you know, I'm not necessarily a Python expert. Um, I've worked with Python, but I, I don't know everything about uh, what I'm what I'm actually seeing here. And, and so, but the, the first thing I see, see here is Streamlit. Like, it's described as a Streamlit application. So maybe I'm curious about that. I want to dig deeper. I say, what is Python Streamlit? Because maybe I don't know. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and 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 so this is a this is a common thing that happens when you onboard at a startup or at a company, and and you see that the company is using some sort of technology you're not necessarily familiar with. Mm -hmm. This answer uh, is contextualized to the file that I currently have open. So it's taken that file, it's looked into it, and it's providing uh, contextual information about what it's seeing there, describing Streamlit as a as a general concept of like what that's actually doing, you know, helping me build that front end application. Mm -hmm. Now, the more interesting thing, though, is when I can start to take snippets of the code, like, let's say this paragraph right here, um, or this function right here called split paragraphs. And I see it doing a lot of things. I don't really know why, though. Like, it says split paragraphs, but I see it, it's handling something with this, like, three back ticks. Like, like what, what is that actually doing, right? Mm. So I can select send to Amazon Q and explain. And so what that's going to do is going to grab that, send it in over to the chat prompt, and it's going to go through that code and explain wh why it's doing the things that it's doing. Wow. So when I, read, when I read through this, it, it comes through a whole analysis of, of what the function is doing, and it comes down to the fact that it's processing text content that may contain markdown-style code blocks. So it's ensuring that code blocks are not split into separate paragraphs during the text processing. So that now I understand that that's what that, those three backticks are referring to. It's referring okay. to a markdown code block. Mm -hmm. So this is an example of how it can help me to understand code that at first glance doesn't look familiar. There's not very many comments here to explain you know, what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I know that one thing developers complain about is, is uh, when they work on somebody from somebody else's code base like it's not always commented properly it's you know the documentation is often lacking so it sounds like this is so, filling so a gap w there watch this though i can take that same yeah. code block and i can say enhance this with a doc string and comments uh to explain what's going on and, and let's see what it does you know i think this is going to actually um take this and add more comments in line on there. So now th this, this, if anything, is a little too many comments. Like maybe <laughs> I need to, maybe I need to adjust my, my prompt here and ask it to put less comments here. Yeah. But you can see that it added a doc string. It added these really verbose comments explaining in line what everything is actually doing. And so if I am a new developer looking at this code now, you know, I have a lot of guide here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't want it to be commenting like, you know, Python yeah. is a language that, you know, but, but, but you, but you, yeah, that, that does, that does seem very helpful. So are you able then to um, import that into the, the existing code base or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so with this, I can do insert it at, at cursor and copy. Now, the more interesting thing is what happens if I type slash dev. 
And you'll see this option pop up. It says plan and implement new functionality across multiple files in your workspace. So what this is going to do is it's going to look at all the code files and try to come up with a plan for how to implement a new feature. So let's let's mm -hmm. do one. Let's do Flash Dev. Um, let's add add a toggle button that turns on dark mode for the streamlit theme. Uh, uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm not really sure whether this works. This is about as live as it gets in terms of a demo. <laughs> we'll give it a <laughs> and, and, and And to set the right expectation, I don't expect that this is going to 100% work. But it's going to start to give me some of the, the fun, fundamental foundational pieces that I can use to then finish the rest of it. Mm -hmm. um, the, so the first step is creating a plan. So this is where it's sort of gathering all the files inside of the repo, understanding your project structure and where, you know, what frameworks you're using, you mm -hmm. know, where you might even begin to actually implement a feature. And I find that actually using the planning aspect is incredibly useful when I'm working with open source project or I'm working with some project that I've never touched before mm -hmm. because I don't necessarily understand the layout of this of this project, right? Okay, so let's come back with a plan here. And so you can see the plan is that it's gonna modify my main.py to import a set theme function. It's going to add a Boolean state variable, keep track of dark mode. It's going to add a, a checkbox or toggle button, and it's describing the different steps to do this. In some cases, depending on the feature I ask, it'll also propose tests to mm -hmm. automatically add as well. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's not adding any tests, which is a little bit disappointing. I, I kind of would have liked it to add a test for this sometimes. It, so these, these, these things are still non-deterministic. So sometimes you get different results back. So I have seen it in some cases yeah. um, in the past, proposed tests for front-end things as well. Yeah. But let's go ahead and generate that code. Okay. Generating the code can take a, a, a little bit as well, but mm -hmm. um, what you're going to see is that it'll spit back a code diff that mm -hmm. shows me side by side the, the code before and after adding this this new feature to the code base. We talked a little bit about you mentioned working with open source code. Mm -hmm. there, are there um, particular features or advantages with um, Amazon Q developer that would be helpful to someone who works with a lot of open source code? So I think the uh, the models we're using behind the scenes are are, are quite good. Uh, you know, I've used a lot of different generative AI uh, products and I find the Amazon Q answers to be uh, uh, pretty pretty fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. Particularly though for things that are uh, integrating with AWS. Uh, so, you know, if you're a Python user here and you're using uh, Boto, you know, you're, you're, you're interacting with yeah. the AWS SDK. There's a lot of surface area there, and sometimes it's a little tricky to figure out what these different API calls are doing and, and like, what you're supposed to be passing over the SDK yeah. uh, to different aspects of the, of the backend API. And so I think this is a place where AWS is particularly excelling at and where we'll see more integrations in the future where even, even other tools uh, can, can integrate Amazon Q to, to add the extra lo layer of sort of AWS-specific intelligence uh, mm -hmm. back to the generative AI. But... It really works with pretty much everything I've tried. Like I am mostly a JavaScript developer, and mm -hmm. so I, I, I work in like Vue, JS, and things like that. I, it's done fantastically at front end development. I've seen it do good back end development. Uh, we have a list of, of programming languages, which I don't remember off the top of my head, that are, are the most strongly reported, uh, supported. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it doesn't support every language, but you'd be surprised what other languages have to be trained in there and and, and actually kind of work, you know, out of the box. Yeah. So, and so here we can start to see uh, this this change is actually a very simple one because uh -huh. this is a streamlit application. But so we're adding a streamlit uh, checkbox there, which is appears to be tied to the value of that um, boolean that we're setting. Mm -hmm. And so so it has figured out how to add this. This one doesn't look particularly impressive because it's only a few lines change, but mm -hmm. I've seen it come out with you know pretty more, much more significant 100 line changes for some of the more complex yeah. features you might ask for it as well <laughs> oh. but so this gave, basically gives you a general idea of like what we're going for here we're trying to create a, an assistant that lives there right there in your ID it saves you time you don't have to switch back and forth between browser mm -hmm. to ask questions anymore yeah um, it keeps me in my development flow it's writing code for me it's explaining code it's even helping me fix or refactor code and you mentioned that you don't, at the, off the top of your head, know the, all the languages it supports, but it's a lot of... It's Python is definitely on the list, though. That's the important yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. That's good. Um, uh, is JavaScript? Yes. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, if someone wants to, to try this out, or give it, you know, how would they do that? So l definitely search for Amazon Q Developer. 
okay. know, if you search for Amazon Q, you're going to get stuff about the business side of things. You're going to get search about uh, stuff about like data science side of things. Q developer is the is the part. If you are somebody who writes code for a living, mm-hmm. and and you want to ask questions about code, and you want it writing code for you, Q developer is the is sort of branch suite of projects that are tied together into the experience for writing code. Okay, so Amazon Q developer yeah, you should yeah, look yeah. for. And and our landing page for that will take you off to resources for how to get started on all the things that I've shown today. <laughs> excellent, excellent. It's a fun product to work with and I encourage everybody to at least try it out. Um, you can try it out for free. Mm-hmm. All you gotta do is sign in with a builder ID. Okay. So you don't even have to have an AWS account. So this is a this is a big blocker for some folks. They're a little bit scared to sign up with the AWS account because like, what if I get billed, right? Yeah. Well, with builder ID, it's completely free. It's not even tied to an AWS account yet. Uh, so uh, you can sign up with, even without a credit card. You can try this out in your IDE. Uh, and see what the experience is. And then later, if you want to upgrade to, you know, premium tier or business tier or something like that, there's an option. That's a wrap. And uh, we want to thank uh, Nathan Peck from AWS for joining us today. And we'd like to thank AWS for sponsoring our conversation today. Um, this is Heather Joslin from uh, the New Stack, And uh, we'll see you next time. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.